Welcome to the 14th episode of the sixth season of the Ubuntu podcast. In this episode, we're going to interview Sean Tilly from Diaspora. We've also got another time saving tip, and we'll read your feedback. If you're listening live, you can send us messages using the chat facility on the website and in the IRC channel. I'm Andy, and joining me this evening are Tony. Hello. You <laughs> chose me first because I'm the easy one, right? I did, <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, we have two Lauras with us. So, uh, Laura Tchaikovsky, hello. Hiya, how are you doing? Good. And Laura Cowan, hello. Hello. What is the collective noun for a group of Lauras? Lauras? Lauras. A Laura of Lauras? Oh, Lord. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a Lord of Lauras. <laughs> a, a very nice group of Lauras. Absolutely. Was my advice, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So what's everybody been up to? Oh, absolutely. That's what I was about to oh, ask. Okay. What has everybody been up to recently? So Laura Coe. Laura Coe. Laura Coe. Uh, I upgraded my laptop to 1304. Oh, I did that too. What yeah. do you think? Well, it's fine. I, I, d- I don't have any virtual workspaces anymore. Is that intentional? Do you know? Uh, you, there is a, you can put the workspace switcher back. But yeah. yeah. I'm not too worried. There. I was just checking that it actually... I think it's a setting. Yeah, I, I, it's a setting in somewhere in the preferences. You can put the you can get the workspace switcher back. I've got four. Okay. It works for me. Ooh. Yeah. Mr. That's fine. Four Anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Really? That's yeah. all you've done? That's yep. all I've done. Tony, what have you been doing? Oh, very little. Nothing of any interest. Nothing of any interest. What about you, Andy? You, you're always Me. doing interesting things. I've done a few things. I went to, this week, last weekend, I went to Open Tech, which oh, yes. is um, kind of, uh, I'm not quite sure who the co-organisers are, but there were people from the Open Rights Group, um, from oh, the Linux cool. Floss community. I think it's, I think it's um, Foss Group that, that organises mm. it. I can't remember. I, I'm, I'm bad. But it was lots of kind of open culture, Linux, software development. There was stuff about the project for constitutional excerpts, which was trying to catalogue all constitutions across the world and make them searchable, wow. which is pretty cool. There was um, stuff about writing. Um, there was hardware stuff. The Rob Bishop from the Raspberry Pi Foundation was there. He gave a great kind of half hour Q and A session. Um, lots and lots of stuff. There was a great session for, on a new new project called Three Hundred Seconds, which is trying to get more female speakers to okay. uh, feel comfortable speaking in front of audiences, and then encourage them into or help to get them into the speaking circuit, which is really cool. Lots of stuff happening. And the other thing I've been doing, which is my day job, as some people will know, is uh, <laughs> uh, working on something a little little project called Cloud Foundry, which is a uh, um, a big open source platform as a service so it's kind of similar to something like heroku except it's open source and uh, i'm the community lead and developer advocate for it so we're about to launch version two on aws and openstack and vmware which is cool stuff excellent and uh, laura other laura um i've actually had a busy week working in ubuntu land um i've been working on the local council uh organizing the reviews that are going to happen during the next few months and set out our actual plan for what we're going to work on. We've just had new mem- two new members join the council. Wow. Yeah, so we kept kept quite busy and you're meeting different people from all over the world and helping them as best they can with the issues that they raise. And uh, I've also upgraded to Saucy this week. Saucy. Ooh. Saucy. Very Saucy nice. Salamander. So far it works. It's... You just had to be better than me and Laura, didn't you? We've only just got to rearing and you had to go <laughs> one further. Sorry. Well, I discovered I was going from 12 or 4. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Saucy? It, it it works very nicely. And it works. <laughs> wow, you skirted so around that one well. Well. No, well. It works very nicely. I'm glad I upgraded. And... I expect it's the internal version with lots of features that you can't tell us about. Oh, <laughs> oh really? I'm getting a look now. It's all open oh, now, though, isn't it? Out. It's all out there. You, he is in hands reach. It. Oh, I am, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully the two of you can behave yourself while we talk to Sean Tilly from the Diaspora Project. <laughs> So joining us on the line this evening is Sean Tilly from Diaspora. How are you doing, Sean? Oh, I'm doing great, Tony. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed for coming on and talking to us this evening. So tell us, first of all, what on earth is Diaspora? Diaspora is a different kind of social network in the sense that you look at uh, a, no- a centralized service such as Facebook. It's got millions of users getting on every day, uh, and it's just these giant monstrosities of servers. Um, Diaspora is this idea that you don't have to have these gigantic servers in order to have a social experience on the web. 
And so we want to have an initiative to leverage emerging open web standards to better better get closer to this idea. Uh, every every uh, step we take with this is a step forward for a sort of decentralized communication, similar to email, but you know a, a general envisioned next step. So when you say decentralized, is that in terms of where it's running or? Yeah, I mean, it's basically this idea, similar to WordPress, uh, you can you can set up your own diaspora server, and you could be its only user, for example. And you could just go and follow anyone you wanted to follow across the web that also used diaspora on their own servers. We have many community-run options, so not everyone has to run their own server. But the idea is that everyone can talk seamlessly across these different pods, and have a unified social experience so it's not reliant on any one single organization or company or person to ensure that the service keeps operating yeah exactly so facebook hosts all of the content that is uploaded to it all of the photographs and all of the comments and that sort of thing Uh, how does diaspora tackle that problem diaspora uses uh, an open federated web standard well, we build on the standard called o- OStatus, uh, and OStatus is this really great protocol for sending messages across the web. You can send status updates, you can send photographs, uh, you can talk seamlessly with it, and we use this as our secret sauce for use- how our servers talk to one another. Um, there is no central database where all the all the statuses go or where all the photographs go. It, it's just it's just collected on the user's pods database uh, from incoming connections. Okay, so does somebody have to be running their own pod to participate in Diaspora? No, like I said earlier, we have many community-run pods. Uh, you can go to poduptie.me, which is you know pod up time and uh, see a bunch of community options in which anyone is welcome to join. You know, many, many pod operators uh, operate under the assumption that they're helping move the open decentralized web vision forward. So they're more than happy to have a few people come here and there. So in that situation, somebody is uploading their photographs to a community pod, perhaps? Yes. Okay. And is there any kind of guarantee around the operation of those pods? We operate... Uh, our development under the assumption that every test that we put into our software has to pass. It's a a principle of test-driven development. And uh, so we we often test for all sorts of little scenarios in which, you know, what if some little thing breaks the server? So we try to test very hard to fight any sort of regressions in our development. And as a side effect, we want to make sure that all of the servers running our software are stable enough to handle... Uh, all of the features that we we offer for the project. So, Sean, you just started to talk about the development of Diaspora there. And and also, back at the beginning, you you mentioned as well about um, open standards and this O-status standard or O-status standard. So I'd like to ask a a kind of a two-part question, if I may. The first part was really to dig a bit deeper in terms of some of the open source and web standards you're talking about using, uh, and also then really to... If, you, if you'd like to spend some time maybe talking to us about uh, why you chose uh, an open source route and, and what benefits that brings you. Well, you know, honestly, I feel that if you want to really open up the web and make it a better place, you can't do that with proprietary software. It's just very contradictory to what the open web is all about. Right, right. And so what in terms of uh, the open web and standards, I mean, presumably front ends of things like you you know you're using html5 and those kind of all that kind of good stuff are there any other kind of standards and protocols and formats that that are important to diaspora the way that you're developing it well uh diaspora itself is a ruby on rails application and uh we use part of the o status standard like i said uh to better support how our messages are sent from server to server you know you could you could always dog food it and write your own but it's more practical to just use an existing standard that has a support base in which you can go to those developers and ask questions about how something is implemented it's much more time consuming to do that all yourself 
piggybacking on those kind of that kind of good work that's already being done elsewhere. Um, well, yeah, and you, your project can be an implementation of that greater standard, and you can have edge cases in which something doesn't work, and your improvements can be sent back upstream, for example. And I think that's a very interesting collaborative generative process that uh, these kinds of standards need is that they need to have downstream using their software and submitting patches back. Right. So, so by by people implementing um, standards and finding the kind of the wrinkles and and how these things work in real life, you can give some good feedback to the authors of the standard. Has has that has that actually happened so far with the Asper, or is that um, an aspiration? It's definitely an aspiration at this point. Many of these standards are uh, are emerging. There's actually more than one than just those. Standards, you know. So we have all these different standards that we want to look at, and we have to ask ourselves, you know, what's the right one to go with? How do we, how do we, how do we foster uh, these aspirations to each of these projects? Because you have to realize they all have different pieces of the same puzzle. We're all trying to find the best way to make decentralized social work. As a, a decentralized um, thing, when it's running, how do you, do you have a sense of how many people are on there? Is there a way of knowing that? We have estimates. Uh, you know, you always have to take those with a grain of salt. But you know, the the estimates for the overall users across every single pod that you know are mostly active is anywhere between you know fifty thousand to a hundred thousand or more. Cool. That's pretty good going. Do you know roughly what sort of people mm-hmm. use Diaspora? Is it the free software fanatics or is it a wider cross-section of human I, life? I would say it's actually a highly diverse community. Uh, there certainly is a love for free software and there's certainly a lot of uh, activists in the sense of uh, Occupy and Anonymous and just a lot of, a lot of people that are interested in seeing uh, the web move forward. It might not be the typical facebook crowd it might not be like um something consisting of you know something for everybody but it is diverse in the sense that there is intellectual discussions on just about every topic you can think of so um i've noticed that there's um a lot of um versions of the on the on the pot up time can you tell us a little bit why there are so many in possibly germany or um, the states and why they have a user rating and what the difference is about them I think the best way to think about it is that there's more than one pod running uh, any version of these software, and there are different pods with different rules and different ideas, and some some even often offer different features, and that's just the nature of having an open source project that anyone can modify. And so it's good to have a sort of centralized uh, directory in which users can look at that, and if they're trying to decide whether or not to switch, they can perhaps choose the best one uh, suited for them and their needs. Okay, so I just wanted to pick up what you were talking before about the level of debate and things that that, uh, takes place on Diaspora. Um, Is there a way to sell Diaspora to, for example, my mum or dad, both of whom are on Facebook and and share photos, but, you know, don't do a huge amount else other than that? What what should I tell them to get them to use Diaspora instead of Facebook? Well, I think the trick is that we're not at that point in which Joe Average would necessarily be interested. You can't just interest someone on the idea that it's private, for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can't have someone interested in the fact that it has features. Google Plus, I think, is a testament to that initially, where, you know, it launched and had virtually every feature of Facebook, and a lot of people were like, well, I'm already on Facebook. (laughs) So I think the trick is you have to understand that it's part of a greater idea about a user being able to not only own all of their data, but being able to have control over the applications that they use, control over the things that they say, and not have to deal with the constant crap of, uh, you know, Facebook uh, is notorious for censoring many of its pages. And, you know, in a lot of ways, that's just completely anti-user. And I think even even Joe Average can understand that. So... What if your goal isn't to get Joe Average on there at the moment? What does success look like for Diaspora? Success, in my opinion, looks like getting the existing standards to where they need to be, and offering a working system that proves that this concept is not only a good one but one that is effective. 
we have working software now that is a testament to how great this idea can be. And we want to move forward and make it easier to install and make it easier to use. We, you know, you can't just uh, move towards this open goal of uh, a better web without making it more accessible to the users on it. You know, it, it, it'd be great if it's uh, an open platform, but what good is an open platform if no one's going to use it? You have to, you have to empower everyone in some sense. So what's your plan for what you'll do next? Our plan right now is uh, as a community-run project, we want to kind of empower the community developers that we have there to work on whatever whatever they want to work on. We have a very open and democratic process um, with uh, how we approach new features and proposals for changes. And so, you know, if a developer steps up and says, hey, I want to implement uh, a decentralized version of social groups, you know, a lot of our developers would probably be okay with that and the feature would probably take off. And we, we want to we enable that so that we can better improve our code, improve our user experience, and just improve our general feature set. It's just kind of a, an iterative growth and it's just, you just have to constantly improve like many open uh, platforms before us have. And what's coming up in terms of new features? The latest release that we made, version 0.1.0.0. Nice. <laughs> we use a, a semantic versioning scheme <laughs> so as to not inflate our release numbers. Uh, our latest release has a lot of new features that uh, our last ones haven't had. For example, we have now have uh, geolocation features. Of course, completely user opt-in. Mm-hmm. In which a user can can tag where where they are in a post, and I think I think that going forward could actually be very interesting in itself. But uh, other features that we've had, we've had many many uh, improvements on just the general uh, bugs that we've had in the past. Because being honest, it's a bleeding edge kind of field of development. You're going to have bugs. But we we tried to focus on things uh, the on the user end. We have a completely revamped mobile site now that's been in development for the past couple of months uh, that now allows like uploading photos from the field, for example. You just upload it off of your phone instead of needing to get onto the desktop version to do so. And is that your approach rather than having apps for all the various plat- mobile platforms? At the po- at this moment, yes. Uh, in the future, I think we would rather just have an open API in which any app can run, uh, can can access a diaspora pod. But uh, at this point, we just think it's the easy solution considering how many mobile platforms there are uh, just even opening up with things like Ubuntu Touch. Yeah, hmm. there's always another platform around the corner. <laughs> and that's, that's completely okay, but you know, trying to support that many different platforms on your own is a nightmare. So, um, what? Uh, how how can people get involved in the uh, community? It's as simple as joining. Uh, you can join any of our community pods, uh, make some friends, follow some hashtags, and just kind of get involved with uh, the discussions. Uh, it's really a very a very opposite uh, concept of Facebook, in which content and user discovery is uh, preferred over just being a little private person with a circle of friends. So it, even though it is a, by, a nature, by its nature a private software, uh, it, it, it encourages users to join into conversations and actually have something to say. Uh, and I think that that's just kind of the nature of decentralized social in general right now. It's just it, it has a lot of open source users that like having that kind of environment. So, so if uh, you know we're an Ubuntu podcast, if if there are folks out in the Ubuntu community, um, particularly developers who are interested, is is there a space for them to get involved? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, right now, we are in the process of trying to package up Diaspora and make it easier to install. There's been a, an initiative for Debian, and uh, we're currently evaluating trying to move over as many of those packages as we can to Ubuntu. Nice. Uh, we're the best way to do so, and. If there's any Ubuntu packagers out there, you know, we would love your help. You know, it, it's in, within our interest to say that setting up a pod should be as simple as 
sudo apt-get install diaspora and then editing a configuration file. So if um, developers and packages want to get in contact with you, which is the best way to do that? Um, there's a couple of different different uh, mediums that we use. You could always contact me directly, which is uh, sean at joindiaspora.com. Uh, you could always... Uh, we have we have a, a service that we use called Lumio, uh, which we use for democratic discussions, and that's completely uh, open for users to request a, a membership to join. We do all of our development out on GitHub, so any issues that a user has, they can just hop right on and uh, dive right into whatever the problem is. So is that github.com forward slash diaspora? Yep, slash diaspora slash Perfect. diaspora. Brilliant. So. We, we want to have a lot of different inroads to how even, even the most basic of knowledge users can, can contribute in some small way, whether it's through community, whether it's through, its, it's through development, whether through it's offering an opinion on our development. And I think you have to, you have, to have that for your community at some level. Um, you can't just have like an open, like Ubuntu Brainstorm is a good example of uh, something that didn't work out because... It was so showered and saturated with ideas that it was very hard to sift through the ones that were practical for implementing. Yes. So it, it's more like we, we have uh, this initiative to establish consensus across the project to really get a point where we all understand where everyone's coming from as far as what we want to do and what we want to see in the future out of our platform. Cool. It sounds like Diaspora has got uh, a lot of opportunity ahead of it to really make a difference to the way the web is used and the way people look after their data. So um, thank you very much indeed for spending a few minutes talking to us this evening and uh, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. It's Webby Love. Ooh. Webby Love. Webby Love. Webby Love. What's wrong yeah. with the command line? Well, um, nothing. It's just this one's about the web. Is that all right? Well, we're mixing yeah. it up this week. Go on then. Mr. Andy. So this week Fine. we're going to look at Clippy, which is Microsoft Clippy for the web, basically. Uh, oh, think well, back to the little paper clip that we all used to like or hit, stab, kill. Um, <laughs> <laughs> put it on your website. And if you really want the little doggy, you can change it to the dog. Cool. Um, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but, you know. Why wouldn't you want we to could, do it, We I could think. make all kinds of annoying things happen on the web now. That's amazing. Remember <laughs> those little ball and play with the ball and throw it around the page? It's it's all all piddle on it's the all corner written. of your website. A, a what? Sorry? It, it could piddle on the corner of your website. I thought Quite that's cool. what you said. I thought that's what you said. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, you've got three people and possibly a lot of people on the internet looking at you quite blankly now. Yeah. So, um, right. So, so it's all written in JavaScript as well, which is quite fun. Yes, so it's like a snippet of code. You just copy and paste it into the source code of your web page, yep. and it'll appear next time you visit the page. Brilliant. Excellent. Why yeah. wouldn't you want it? Well, yeah, relive the good old days of Word 6. We should talk to Mark about getting it on the Ubuntu podcast web page. I thought you were going to say talk to Mark oh. about getting it on the Ubuntu.com desktop. Well, be <laughs> Clearly. Yeah, you could put it right next to the community link. Glares. Right, okay, uh, that's the webby love this time, and uh, should we get on with your feedback? Why not? And we have quite a lot of feedback. Andy SC tweeted. Oh, I get to be Andy SC. That, mm. That's yes. never happened before. <laughs> <laughs> Loving the new snack size UUPC. It's like a Twix. You can either have one piece at a time, or you can have both halves in one go. Grin. Excellent. I'm glad <laughs> we're keeping Andy happy. And John Barry 303 tweeted, Most recent podcast mentions the proper direction. Dogs and horses race <coughs> clockwise and counterclockwise in different Australian states. Uh, this is to do with the direction of the swirl on the Ubuntu logo that was on the Ubuntu desktop icon yeah. that was changed because people said that clockwise was positive and anti-clockwise was negative. This is insane. Really? This, yes. This, this is ridiculous. It just runs and runs. This is our third podcast about it. Yeah. If you think that's insane, wait till we get to the cats later on. <laughs> and then Super Engineer tweeted, 
Wanted, an official package called Love, so I can open the dash, type command line love, and magic happens. <laughs> Thanks, super engineer. I'm not quite sure what magic you're expecting to happen at that point. Um, but, you know, we'd like to keep people happy. Well, we nearly lost him during the, uh, during the live feed earlier, but he's managed to get it back. So, hello, hello super engineer. Thank you for your feedback. Indeed, yes. Uh, Nadrimai Store, that's a good one, uh, left a comment on our website asking, Isn't BT Sync proprietary software? Is it? This is our command line love Maybe. last this was time. This a command line love that Alan talked about a couple of episodes oh, ago. Mm-hmm. See, Alan's secretly using proprietary stuff. Well, I don't want to um, say that that's the case without having checked, but possibly. <laughs> um, so it was a piece of software that allows people to sync documents um, and notes and that sort of thing between computers without re- relying on a third-party server like Dropbox or Ubuntu One. Um, so it's just this is from BitTorrent Labs, isn't it? So it's one of their yeah. um, experimental bits of code, yeah. um, and it doesn't look like there is any source code available, but Ooh. I might be mistaken. Um, and yeah, we will. We love Alan, so we'll, we'll uh, let him get away with it just this once and beat him heavily in the next time he tries this <laughs> trick on us. Okay. Uh, Catherine left a couple of comments on our website. Thanks for the hint about BitSync. Uh, presumably not the one about it being proprietary. Um, I found it very useful at university in my biology lab. Every other piece of lab equipment has its own PC, so the data I gather in the course of a few days is spread across a handful of machines. Now, with BitSync, it's easy and nice to transfer it to my main PC. Excellent. And generally, thanks for the informative and funny shows. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. And... Thanks for the discussion on, about askubuntu.com. Being a Windows Power user switching step-by-step step to Ubuntu, it helped me a lot already. I also found the voting system so much better than anything the forums use, but I was taken aback a few times when my own posts were edited in a, to me, weird way. Moderators removed my hello and thanks lines. Essentially off-topic, yes, but still basic friendliness. So so I really, just, just um, I'll chip in here as well, I really enjoyed that conversation on, on the last episode as well because... Um, Ask Ubuntu is part of a network of sites called Stack Exchange, and the chap that invented Stack Exchange um, has gone on to come up with a new open source project called Discourse. And what he's aiming to do there, having kind of said, okay, well, look, for getting the answer to something, a forum isn't the best solution because you do get conversation and flame wars and, uh, you know, unmoderated opinions and all kinds of other stuff. So he came up with Stack Exchange, he and his, his, his friends came up with Stack Exchange and has built out this really cool network. So he's now moved over to look at forums and he's got this project called Discourse um, and he's looking to really reinvent forums because he says, you know, if you look at them today and you yeah. look at them 10 years ago, they look the same. They're yep. not really advanced anywhere. So um, just a quick podcast recommendation from me. Okay. There's another podcast called The Change Log, which is from GitHub. If you're really techy, because it's a pretty technical one, um, about coding um, then he was on the last episode of that um, and uh, it was really good I enjoyed it it's an interesting point that Catherine's talking about with the editing of uh, posts saying removing you know, sort of niceties like thanks and hello yeah I mean that doesn't always happen I mean I'm a I'm a editor on on um, Stack Overflow which is another one of the um, as well mm. as Ask Ubuntu and uh, yeah I mean that's not required but um, they're, they're just really looking to get really high quality good factual questions followed by Right. answers which are voted up by people in the know so that you get good quality stuff i mean i'm certainly me as an editor i wouldn't necessarily get rid of hello and thanks but no because it's yeah. just a bit of manners and a bit of friendliness takes it yeah, away absolutely. from being like you know yeah. impersonal mm-hmm. and makes it a bit more of a community feel to be honest absolutely lee devaney sent us a nice email all the way from the south coast i really enjoy your podcast and i've used ubuntu for the past two years and not looked back I'm a great fan of the software and try to encourage people around me to give it a go and feel that the community and its aims provide a great opportunity to work together across the world for a common positive purpose, something which Microsoft can't buy. So a big thank you from a humble Ubuntu user in developing and supporting a more accessible, stable and user-friendly operating system. Keep up the great work. Excellent. I don't think we can take all the credit for uh, producing Ubuntu. We are but the discussive mouthpiece or something like disgusting that. disgusting mouthpiece no, yeah think. exactly <laughs> that's what they called us on the internet um, um yeah f- oh it's, it's good to see that there is um you know people still enjoying and getting benefit from the community yeah despite perhaps some of the rocky patches it's had over the last few months it's clearly doing a good job um, for a lot of people still and finally mike emailed us about training cats to use toilets really Jazz great, Charles Mingus actually wrote the pamphlet on training cats to use toilets. The short instructions are provided on the official Mingus website. On a different topic completely, 
uh, they have been meaning to write in and say ever since the Christmas episode that, that, that as a foreigner to your shores, I too find Laura's accent sexy. It may not have been the reason I kept listening to her after first encouraging your podcasts. Encountering, not encouraging. <laughs> that said, it wasn't the, less, the least of reasons either. And I'm I presume a, that's the other Laura. Not no, I, I'm a big fan of the Irish accent. I think it's lovely. Okay. <laughs> right. Just okay. to rebalance things. So... I, I, I was going to say, is this a good comment for people to be sending in? But Laura, you put it in the feedback, so I presume yes. you're quite happy with so, it. In general, that wouldn't have got through the feedback filter. <laughs> However, and I feel I should explain the other reference here as well. The cats using toilets thing was almost a throwaway comment in the two shows ago. Yeah, a couple of episodes ago. One of my friends in New York, there's not space to have a cat tray, therefore... He Their teaches cat. his cat to turn and put a video on and the I'm web. I'm very glad yes. that the podcats are better behaved and don't <laughs> do that on the recording <laughs> no. studio. We have a cat flap. Yes. So the, the, the accent thing was a reference to the Christmas show. Ah, right. Yeah. We, it wasn't just a random in which weird curvy reference. <laughs> 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 we do get those too and they don't go through. <laughs> Yes. Well, this time it did. It did. Yeah. Because it had a genuine reference. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. And it is a cool accent. (laughs) (laughs) Says you. The Ubuntu podcast needs you. Yes, you. If you hear something that tickles, titillates, or taunts you, tweet us at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook, and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. We really would like to hear from you. So go on, do your duty, keep calm, and compose an email. And that's all for this episode. Join us on Wednesday the 5th of June at 1930 UTC for our next live episode on that's 2030 BST for those in the UK. I've had fun. Thank you very much for inviting me to uh, be your guest replacement for either Alan and or Mark or both or one. Well, that's a pleasure. Thank you very much indeed for coming along. And thank you, Laura, as well. Yeah, thank you, Didi. For being two excellent guest hosts the last couple of episodes. But I think you've earned a small reprise now, so you can have the next few episodes off. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> and we will be back in another week. So yep. we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.